Hello, this is Scott. So I'm continuing um, this series of videos and demonstrations regarding time series and forecasting using R and R Studio. So we covered plots in video one, uh, some statistics, univariate and bivariate statistics, as well as the uh, autocorrelation function in video number two. In this video, we'll be talking about some simple forecast methods, and next time we'll talk about transformation. So this is really meant to be hands-on, but I've been showing this reference for you by Dr. Hyman, whose expertise is time series and forecasting, and he has several books on the subject, so please check those out. Um, I'm going to start with our studio and this library that we've been using, um, the FPP library. Um, and when we load this, you see that the packages that were loaded underneath underneath it, and it has the data sets that we've been talking about. So the first method, and I'm just going to highlight a few of these, and then we're going to go into the actual examples in our studio. So let me just talk about the average method, which is our first method, and it is exactly what you th might think that it is, it's essentially taking the average of the series across T, all of the different um, points across the time dimension. So that's what that essentially um, does, but it will do it for a class time series. So if you're familiar with classes in R, um, if Y is a, is a uh, time series uh, class, then um, it will handle that. Where Y is the actual dimension, the time series, and then H is the forecast on the horizon. And that's the same nomenclature for, for all of these different methods. So the second method is really the naive method. And this method is really only appropriate for time series data. So all the forecasts are simply set to the value of the last observation. Um, so that is the forecast and future values are set basically to YT, where T is the most uh, current or last observed value. And this method actually works remarkably well in economic and financial uh, time series. And by the way, these are benchmark time, these are benchmark um, methods, essentially. So when a new method comes along, it's typically put up against and then and see how well it responds to several different ben benchmarks. And these are what, what are called benchmark methods of time series. So the third one is the seasonal naive method. And it's similar to um, uh, or I should say it, it's very useful for highly seasonal data. So in this case, we set the forecast to be equal to the last observed value at the same season of the year. So, for example, the same month of the previous year. Um, and so the forecast for for uh, the, the current time plus H, where H is the um, period of the season, seasonality of the data. So for, for monthly data, for all future February values, it's equal to the last observed February value. So, or a quarterly data, it would be equal to the quarter in the previous year. So it's it's very good when you don't have trending, right? So it's going to basically take the, the same period um, and project forward. And then we have this this drift method, and um, the 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 drift method utilizes this this RWF, which is actually RWF stands for uh, random walk forecast. And in the future, we'll see that a random walk is similar to an ARIMA when we get into ARIMA models, ARIMA 010 um, model. So um, we'll definitely get into those later in in the, uh, the series that we're in, OK? Um, so the drift method again, it's it's a it's a variation of this naive method, but it allows a dampening or basically a drift, uh, which is a decrease um, over time. 
And so it's set to be the average change in the historical data. So um, we'll, we'll see it in just a minute, but it, it's basically, a, it drifts off from the, the, the time Y sub T, the last observed value. So if you were with me last time, we talked about the, the beer data. And so I'm gonna load that and I'm gonna, I'm gonna create my window just as I, I did before. Um, in fact, let me just do that as one command here. And then I'm going to create these three different methods um, um, that I just showed you. Now, where I'm replacing Y with beer and H with 11. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot those, right? So this is a simple plot my beer one, beer two, beer three. Um, and then my legend uh, here as well. And when I do that, this is the output that I get. So my mean method is in blue. It basically is the, the average across the series. The um, naive method is in red, so it's the last time Y sub T. And then my seasonal naive looks really good. Of course, this is very seasonal data. And it essentially takes the the series, um, the average across these, uh, the period that that it's in. So it looks at the the past Februarys, the past Marches, et cetera, and uh, creates that. And then uh, lastly, let's look at uh, some stock data, Dow Jones uh, data here. I'm going to uh, load that. Now, once I have that loaded, I'm going to look again. I'm going to take, you know, these functions, the, the mean F, the average, um, you know, the naive uh, method as well, uh, as well as the drift here. And then I'm going to label uh, those out. Okay. So let me grab that and run that. And then I can see here again that blue is the, the mean method, which is the, the average of the series. Uh, naive, the last point taken. And then the drift method, which actually we're drifting, we're increasing because of this, this trend here. Again, these are very simple methods, but actually uh, pretty powerful. In, and again, they serve as benchmarks for other um, methods as we, as we move forward. Okay, so with that, um, again, next time we'll be talking about um, transformations and extensions, and if you have any comments, uh, please send me an email. Thank you.